everybody! Welcome to Live at the Hub. I'm Cassie Little Green, lead pastor of True Vision Christian Community. And today I'm hosting from the Lancaster Bandstand, where we will be having our first in-person gathering since COVID-19 next Sunday, July 12th at noon. So remember, July 12th at 12 noon. We'll be having live praise and worship. We'll be having a special message for me, uh, some refreshments, and just a time of celebration for the things that God has done in the lives of, of this church. Now we are asking people to promote social distancing as well as you know wear masks. I mean they're not required, but they're recommended. So we'd love to have you have you join us. Now today is a really special Sunday. You're gonna have praise and worship with me and Pastor Trey, and then we're gonna have a special and timely message from our very own co-pastor, Pastor Rachel. So let's jump into some praise and worship. Come in from the outside, don't be ashamed. Come in from the outside and bless his name. Now it's all on the inside where his glory reigns. Enter in, enter in. Come in from the outside just as you are. Come in from the outside, you're not too far, no, it's all on the inside, simply open your heart, enter in, say, everybody, 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 let everything that happens praise the Lord. Everybody, everybody, pray. Woo! Come in, come in from the outside. Don't be ashamed. Come in from the outside and bless his name now. It's all on the inside where his glory reigns. Enter in. Enter in. Come in from the outside just as you are. Come in from the outside. You're not too far, no. It's all on the inside. Simply open your heart. Enter in, enter in. Say, everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Let everything that happens. Praise the Lord. Everybody, everybody. Hey. Listen, we're the generation that will give you praise and adoration. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Establish now your throne. Oh, my Lord, say we're the generation that will give you praise and adoration. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Establish now your throne. Oh, my Lord, say we're the generation that will give you praise and adoration. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Establish now your throne. Oh, my Lord, we're the generation that will give you praise and adoration. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Establish now your throne, oh my Lord. Hey! We are the generation created to bring forth the glory of God. So this morning as we lift our voices, we, we give you praise. praise. And adoration. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Establish now your throne, oh my Lord. Say, oh my Lord. Lord, 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 oh my Lord, oh my Lord, 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 oh my Lord, praise you, Lord, 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 praise you, Lord, 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 
love you, Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Let everything that have praise the Lord. Everybody, 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 everybody. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Let everything that have praise the Lord.
I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you my past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. What a moment you have brought me to such a freedom. I have found in you, you're the healer who makes all things new, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going back, I'm moving ahead, I'm here to declare to you, my past is over in you, all things are made new. Surrender my eyes to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Yeah. You, you have risen with all power in your hands. You have given me yeah. a second chance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. Here's a deep place to you. My past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. Moving.
I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than God and God alone, because of you my cloudy days are gone, I can sing to you this song, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. shelter from the storm when all my friends were gone you were right there all alone I've never known a love like this before I just want to say that I Love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. worship and adore you just want to tell you Lord I love you more than anything I love you Jesus I worship and adore you Vision. Um, you can support us financially in four different ways through our website www.truevisionlancaster.org slash giving. Again, www.truevisionlancaster.org slash giving. You can give via Givelify, which is an app-based platform. You can give uh, via PayPal, also through Cash App. And you can also mail your gifts to 117 West Main Street, Suite 110E, Lancaster, Ohio, 43130. If you, in case you missed any information, you can find it online at truevisionlancaster.org slash giving. And we thank you for your generous contributions, and we pray that God continues to bless you to be, to be a blessing to others. And now, I'm excited. I hope you're excited, too. We're going to have the word from, from our very own Pastor Rachel that I'll be, re, be returning at the end for closing remarks. Alrighty. 
So today I'm going to be following up to an oldie but a goodie. Um, Pastor Cass has requested that I um, do It's Not How You Start, But How You Finish from two years ago. So this will be part two. Um, honestly, I tried for several weeks to remember what I preached on and how that all went down and I could not remember and I could not find my notes. <laughs> so this is why it's part two because I can't remember. I have a feeling a lot of it's going to overlap, but that's okay. Um, cause that means it's a word for now as it was a word for then. Um, so let's get started. Um, so the first scripture we're really going to be focusing on is called, um, first Corinthians it's chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. It talks about running the race. Um, so give me just a moment to get there. I tabbed it for myself today, so I didn't look foolish trying to find things. Um, all right, so um, I have the Passion Translation. Thank you, hubby, for Mother's Day. Um, <laughs> I'll be reading from, and... Um, I love the how this one is automatically tiled, Paul's disciplined lifestyle. So verse 24 says, isn't it obvious that all runners on the racetrack keep on running to win, but only one receives the victor's prize? Yet each one of you must run the race to be victorious. A true athlete will be disciplined in every respect, practicing constant self-control in order to win a laurel wreath that quickly withers. But we run our way our race to win a victor's crown that will last forever. For that reason, I don't run just for exercise. Oh Lord Jesus, you know I don't do that either. Um, or box like one throwing aimless punches, but I train like a champion athlete. I subdue my body to get it under my control so that after preaching the good news to others, I myself won't be disqualified. And what I've always loved about this part of scripture is we all have our different races we're running. All of our paths look different. Every aspect of it is completely different from one another. But the beauty is, is that we're running for that victor's crown. So we have something that is even more than what we can see here. And there's going to be a lot of times where you're running your race and you don't see any of the good from what you have been planting or doing or sowing. And... I guess it helps to reframe our mindset of it's not going to be something we have here, but it's going to be something that's eternal that we get to have somewhere else. Um, so with that, I want to just talk about how we're all works in progress. <laughs> no one is perfect. The only person who has ever been perfect is Jesus Christ. So with that, give yourself grace and give yourself mercy and then also do that for others. Because when we run our race, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's not going to look perfect, clearly. Like, practicing constant self-control. Um, I don't do very well with that all the time. <laughs> Let's just be real. <laughs> I did not get this way by practicing self-control with food. Um, but I will say, since I've lost weight, I'm learning different things that it's becoming more a part of my nature and I'm learning what's good for me and what's not so good for me. And then with that, I take little pieces and go with that part of practicing the self-control. Like I said, it's a race. And this is something God is talking to me about and has been for a long time. Clearly, if you go back to the first one, I do remember this part where I talked about weight loss because <laughs> that was the journey I was on then. And it's the journey I'm still on now. Um, but with that, there's come a lot of wisdom. There's come a lot of understanding, learning myself, finding healing, figuring out what healing really looks like, not so much in my own mind, but um, what it looks like in God's. And how is that being paralleled with my life and what am I needing to do different to help get there? So that's one of the things that's always stuck out with me. Um, and then... I love the Passion Translation Bible, just saying. Um, it's been one of the best things since um, it is helping me study more. And um, 
like in verse 926, it talks about not, I don't run just for exercise. Well, I don't really do that either. I just walk. Um, I will get back to running one day. Um, but it has here that it actually means I don't run aimlessly. So that is Paul ran with his eyes on the goal of ending well. So whatever ending well looks like for you and me is going to be completely different. I'm not going to look like a superstar athlete and how they end and I end are going to be two totally different things. But at the end of the day, our prize is still going to be Jesus. And that's what we're running towards. And then he talks about how I subdue my body. All right. And verse 27, it says, or <laughs> I beat my body black and blue. Um, the only person who beats my body at this point is Theo because literally I have bruises all up and down my left leg from where if I'm sitting on the couch, that kid will run and jump on me with his left kneecap bulging right on it. And now I literally have like five or six bruises going up and down my leg. That's the only beating of my body you will ever see. Um, not that you probably would see it anyways, but <laughs> that is where that comes. But what I loved about it was this part. It says, so this is clearly an obvious metaphor. Placing the desires of one's body as second place to the desires of the Holy Spirit. And that runs back with Romans, which we will get into Romans next because you know I love my Romans. Um, so just kind of keeping those things in mind. We're running the race. We're practicing these things. We're not going to be perfect at it, but we're practicing them. And we're going to get where we're needing to go because our eye is on the prize. So hopefully that will bring apart about, I guess I should say, some type of hope. Hope that there's something more. There's something beyond what we have right now. And I know with how the world is right now, it's complete and utter chaos. And so we've got to have our eyes on a, on a prize that we know is going to be good and is going to bring forth hope. So that's part one of running this race. And it's not how you start, but how you finish. I think I just remembered when I did this the first time we were doing a whole 30, I believe, weren't we cast? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I started off great. And then by like day four, I'm like, give me chocolate. And he's like, no. And I'm like, yes, you're evil. <laughs> and I think at that point I was like, we made it to like week two. And I was like, okay, I'm good. I got this. Uh, but we're not doing a whole 30 right now, but we are doing something similar. And so it does kind of get like that sometimes still. <laughs> So still learning. Like I said, works in progress. The next scripture we're going to look at is going to be Romans 5, verses 3 through 5. Boom. All right. So this is talking about our new life. So if you've been in the church a while, you've probably heard this many of times. Where we're new creations in Christ um, for what has been done on the cross. And um, with the power of the Holy Spirit, the new lives that we get to have through transformation um, that brings forth hope. And so we're just going to build off of that just a little bit more as we run this race. So in verse 3, it says, um, oh, he's finishing up from verse 2. So, But that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. Other versions say perseverance. So keep that in mind. And patient endurance will refine our character. Improving character leads us back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy. No. Because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And that is the most beautiful thing I think I've read in a very long time. Um, and so with that, when I was thinking about this and praying about what am I supposed to say, Lord? Um, perseverance was always the word that came up. So when I looked at this one, I'm like, oh, it says patient hope, not patient endurance, not what I'm looking for. Um, but I knew it was the right scripture. And so... I started thinking more about that. I'm like, okay, God, what is that supposed to bring forth? Where are we at? And I was thinking about all those times we started our weight loss journeys. 
um, for my husband and I. I know for myself, I always start off with joyful confidence that this is going to be it, that we're going to do this, we're going to rock it, everything's going to be great, and I'm going to be that skinny mini I always wanted to be. And then life happens, right? That journey continues. And now, I feel like at this point in my life, even though it's been a couple years, I'm at that patient endurance. (laughs) I am choosing to not give up. It'll be a constant battle, and I know that. Um, And so with that, I've been kind of changing my mindset around it. Like, it can't be a very minor amount of time in my life. It's got to be the rest of my life. So whatever happens in these two weeks, I'll focus on that and then I'll celebrate that and I'll just keep going in this small pattern because that's what's going to add up. That's what I need to focus on. So whatever it is that God has on your heart that he wants to see you either change or he wants to transform a little bit, just knowing that that race is there and there's a reason at the end of it that's going to bring that victor's crown. Because it's all going to come back to him. And that's what's most important. So finding that joyful confidence. Knowing God's with you. Knowing God's calling you to this. Knowing that there's something bigger at the other end of it that you don't see yet. And you know the journey is going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. If it was, it would have happened a long time ago, more than likely. Um, But we can have that confidence that he's with me. He's going to get me through this, and we're going to make it to where we need to go. That's going to help us develop that patient endurance. Now, that patient endurance is not so easy. I don't know if you've ever prayed for patience. I know I have. And then I'm like, why on earth did I pray for that? That is like the worst thing I could have possibly ever prayed for because it seems like then I'm like, my emotions are on like 20, and I need them to be on like two. <laughs> Um, I get easily annoyed, very irritable, those kinds of things. And just being able to step back and I'm like, wow, okay, God, I know you're trying to help me with this because I asked for it, but I don't really think I knew what I was asking for at the time. But as you continue on your journey and whatever it is God's asking you to focus on at this time, just knowing that there's going to be those moments where you're like, oh, I just want to give up. This is too hard. There's too much that's coming up all at once. I can't handle it. That's when, even in the midst of that, if you make that choice, you're going to get up one more time, and you're going to keep trying one more time. That brings about the endurance. That is that patient endurance that he's talking about. Despite any type of obstacles that come your way, that's what he's talking about. And you'll run across that. Like I know I've been talking about weight loss because that's my journey. Um, but there's been times in my walk with God where that has become the exact same thing that I had to figure out, am I going to choose him one more day because of all the crap that was going on in my life? Am I going to believe that he is who he says he is despite everything else that's going on in my world that really, really starts to prove to me, make me question Is he really who he says he is? Is he really true? And so those are those moments where that endurance will come. That's going to now lead to your proven character. Now, this is literally my prayer (laughs) almost every day I go into work. And other days too, but mostly on my days of work. Is that God uses me to instill hope, to bring about change, to help facilitate change, to challenge ideas and belief systems so that people can be who they want to be, live the life that they want to live. Um, And then this last part where it says, proving character leads us all back to hope. If we don't have hope, I really don't think we would have anything because hope is what will get you out of bed every morning, knowing that today can be different. Today, God has something to show you. He wants to use you for somebody else. That will be what gets you out of bed. Hope and knowing that this is not everything. This is not the end all meets all. There's something greater. There's something more beautiful on the other side. 
So hope. And I love that this says in the next verse, in verse 5, this hope is not a disappointing fantasy. And so, where's E? Or, this hope does not put one to shame. I don't know about you, but whenever I know I mess up or feel like I screwed up or somewhere along the line, all of this is not going the way I expected it, I definitely place a lot of blame and shame on myself. And so this is where they're saying this is not about a disappointing um, hope or something that's going to put us to shame. But instead, instead, we get this experience of what endless love with God is like. And I love how it just says it's cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. In the Old Testament, um, when they were trying to find a king to anoint after Saul, like, screwed up everything. Um, and they're looking, is it Samuel? It was Samuel, right? Okay. Um, sorry, I was talking to Kath. He's back there. Um, and Jesse brings out all of his all of his sons who are like, I would say like the WWE wrestlers of the day. <laughs> like, they're all big, tall, and strong. And then uh, Samuel's like, no do you have any other sons? And he's like, yeah, I've got the little shepherd boy out there. He's like hanging out with the, the flock, you know, him. Um, and he's like, okay, I want him. And then that's who he anoints. And it wasn't because of his appearance. And so that's something God works with me. It's not about my appearance, but what matters is my heart. And that's the same thing Samuel said when he anointed David as king, as it's, about who he is on the inside. That's what matters. Same thing it's saying here. Is that your character is what matters. Your character is what God is invested in. Because it shows his character when you allow the Holy Spirit to move. When you allow the Holy Spirit to transform you. That's God's character. And that's what people see. And that's what matters the most. And so with that, we know our race is that eternal glory. We're running after that crown of Jesus. We, we know that we're going to hit a lot of road bumps along the way, so just get ready. <laughs> no one ever said being a Christian was easy, but yet everybody tries to make like it is, and it's not. And it's not because of God. <laughs> I, don't, I would never say that the Christian path is not easy because of God. I say the Christian path isn't easy because of our humanity and the things we went through before we came to God that now we're trying to have to undo and rechange and let him transform. It's a whole process. So you have to become something new. And that's where Galatians comes in. We're going to look at Galatians 5. Now I had this set up a certain way, so please forgive me if I remember how it is. Okay which I wanted to focus on the fruits. But I think we're going to do something a little different. Okay, so we're going to look at Galatians 5, 16 through 18. All right, it's titled, The Holy Spirit is Our Victory. As you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. For your self-life craves the things that offend the Holy Spirit and hinder him from living free within you. And the Holy Spirit's intense cravings hinder your old self from dominating you. Which I think is a beautiful kind of catch-22, I feel like, in a way. So, your old self wants the things that we know is going to upset God and turn, like, would be sinful. But yet, at the same time, the Holy Spirit is trying to build up such a desire in you to to only want him that those other cravings will die away but we all know how the enemy works it doesn't make it so simple sometimes so then the two incompatible and conflicting forces within you are your self life of the flesh and the new creation life of the spirit but when you are brought into the full freedom of the spirit of grace you will no longer be living under the dominations of the law, but soaring above it. 
click on Ingalls Wings. So, how do you know if that spirit, if God's spirit is moving and living in you? We're going to jump down to 22 through 23. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love in all of its varied expressions. Joy that overflows. Yes, please, God, more. <laughs> Peace that subdues. Working on it, we're getting there. Patience that endures. I think I'm getting a little bit better with that every day. Kindness in action. I pray for that every day. A life full of virtue. And so that one is referring... i got to make sure I read the really one. Our goodness. It's a prayer. Faith that prevails. And so that's that whole point of if you're going through something and you choose God, your faith is prevailing. Gentleness of heart and strength of the spirit. Or self-control is what that's talking about. So now we've put our self-life down to death. So in verses 20. 4 through 26, it says, Keep in mind that we who belong to Jesus, the Anointed One, have already experienced the crucifixion. For everything connected with our self-life was put to death on the cross and crucified with the Messiah. We must live in the Holy Spirit and follow after Him. So may we never be arrogant or look down on one another for each of us is an original we must forsake all jealousy that diminishes the value of others and when I read this I was like oh lord um I feel like that's a word for our time right now with what we're living in um everything that's going on one we have this hope uh, like when we when we know Christ and we know who he is, we love him. We know that everything that we ever do in our lifetime, now and then in the future, has been on the cross. Which, for me, it actually took a long time to, like, connect, and I don't know why. Um, I always thought, like, every time I sinned, like, that puts Jesus back on the cross. No, he died once. He died for it all. Uh, I, my mistake later on doesn't make him suffer anymore he already suffered for it all and so just to kind of hold on to that to know that it was all in that time so now I can truly have that Holy Spirit because I know when I look at the gifts like you all heard me I'm like oh lord I need more of that please <laughs> definitely not there yet but at the same time like I have that spirit and that um that desire to be more like him it doesn't mean I'm gonna be perfect at it We've already discussed that. Um, but that's where you have to persevere. You have to keep trying. You do your best efforts, and then, but you seek God for your other efforts and have him move and transform and help guide you through it. Um, and I know this is something that we can easily run into with verse 26, just to look down on one another. Like, well, your son is not as... My sin is not as bad as your sin. Therefore, you're bad. <laughs> like, no, that is not how it works. Um, all sin is sin in God's eyes, and that's how we need to look at it, too. I don't know how many times I've looked at Cass and been like, I know I have something to say about X, Y, Z. <laughs> but then I look at myself and I say, God, who am I to point out the speck in their eye when I have a huge freaking log coming out of mine. And yes, that's in the Gospels. I think it's in Matthew somewhere as a teaching lesson. And so with that, that's kind of where we need to be. Is not to be arrogant with one another. Not to think that you're better than somebody. But for each of us as an original. There's no one like you. God will never make anybody like you. You're different. You're unique. You have a purpose. And your purpose I don't know what that looks like in God, but at the end of the day, it's always going to come back to God and going after that victor's crown. So do your journey 
do it the way God has it, where he has you, because you are needed. One of my favorite quotes, I honestly don't know who came up with it, somebody clearly who is very wise, is, to the world you may be one person, but to one person you may be the world. That's how much of an impact you have. And I know I talk about this with a bunch of people (laughs) with my job, like, If there's something you don't like that you see in the world around you, rather than sitting back and criticizing it, be that person to make a change. Do something different. Let God guide you to show you how to do it differently. Because we all have a lot to say, but a lot of us aren't doing anything about it. So if there's something that you don't like, be the change you wish to see in the world. I want to say that was Gandhi. I'm not sure. I can't take credit as much as I wish I could. Okay. So we've got our race. Figure out your race. (laughs) We've got Romans where it talks about hope and perseverance. We got Galatians where how do we know if we're running the race the way we're supposed to? How do we know if we're looking like Christ? How do we know that he is truly working in us? We'll see the fruits, not perfection. But we'll see some of the fruits. And we'll see the fruits coming out in different ways. Maybe not all in one day. So don't expect that either. Lord help us all. Um, Sorry, I think I'm preaching to myself more than I am anybody else right now. So, um, And so with that, I kind of want to end with this, but it's going to be a little bit long. So is that okay? Okay. (laughs) He gave me the thumbs up. Um, I have been journeying through the Psalms lately. Um, like I said, I got my, my pa- passion translation Bible. And because of that, um, if you have not seen a passion translation um, Bible at the very bottom, well, with everything, he has like a little letter for each um, each chapter. He breaks them up into a letter. And then he gives you what it is in either the Septuagint. I can't say that word very well. <laughs> Septuagint. Um, and the Greek or the Hebrew. And so I love that there's more depth to it to kind of run with. And um, when I've been going through the Psalms, I've been taking my dear old time. Let's, that's for sure. I'm currently on Psalm 20. Well, I'm not on it, but I was on Psalm 22. And it's called the prophetic portrait of the cross. And so in this Psalm alone, um, well, sorry, from all the Psalms, there are 33 prophecies. Oh, I read that wrong again. My apologies. And this Psalm alone, I thought that's what it was. There are 33 prophecies about Jesus on the cross. And so I want to read this and I'm going to input the little notes that he has down at the bottom because when I feel like when you read it and you get that additional um, I don't know what word to call it, and an additional thought um, to see what God was up to. I feel like it just kind of transforms a little bit more of what the cross means um, in a deeper meaning, I guess is what I'm really trying to say. Okay, so like I said, a prophetic portrait of the cross. Um, it says, for the pure and shiny one, King David's song of anguish, to the tune of the deer at the dawning of the day. When I read that, I'm like, okay, there's a dot, there's a deer, and it's daylight. Woohoo. Okay, that was my thought process. And then I read this, and I was like, holy moly, Lord. Um, so it says, this could be an amazing picture of Christ giving birth at the cross to a generation of his seed. They are like children of God born in the dawning of of that resurrection morning. Oh Lord. I got goosebumps reading that. Because I would never have thought. To ever look at it as. A birth of something different. Like a birth of a new generation. I never thought of that. You may have. You may have heard that a gazillion times. Or never before. But that. Just putting it in that perspective. Looking at it now through that lens. That was the word I was looking for earlier. Lens. That's where I'm reading it from. 
Okay, so clearly we know David's going through some stuff right now. Um, so it says, God, my God, why would you abandon me now? That should sound familiar if you've been in the church a while, if you haven't. My apologies. But what we're referring to here now is when Jesus is on the cross and he says, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now we're all up to speak. Um, verse 2, why do you remain distant? Refusing to answer my tearful cries in the day and my desperate cries for your help in the night. I don't know if any of you have ever been there, but I know I have. I can't stop sobbing. Where are you, my God? Yeah, I know that you are most holy. It's indisputable. Here we go. Here's some perseverance. Let's go. You are God enthroned, surrounded with songs, living among the shouts of praise of your princely people. Our father's faith was in you. Through the generations they trusted and believed, and you came through. Every time they cried out to you in their despair, you were faithful to deliver them. You didn't disappoint them. But look at me now. I am a woeful worm, crushed, and I'm bleeding crimson. I don't even look like a man anymore. I've been abused, despised, and scorned by everyone. Now, I have never experienced that, but I know Jesus has. So, and when he's talking about being crushed, like a worm, it has down here. It was actually something that they did for dyeing techniques, like, um, they would crush these worms that were red on the inside, use them as dye for their clothing and stuff like that. So that's what he means by being crushed and bleeding crimson. Granted, it also leads to talking about Jesus. So. Um, verse 7, mocked by their peers, despised with their sneers, as all the people poked fun at me, spitting their insults, saying, this is the one who trusted in God. Is this the one who claims God is pleased with him? Now let's see if your God will come to your rescue. We'll just see how much he delights in you. Lord, you delivered me safely from my mother's womb. You are the one who cared for me ever since I was a baby. Since the day I was born, I've been placed in your custody. You've cradled me throughout my days. I've trusted in you, and you've always been my God. So don't leave me now. Stay close to me. For trouble is all around me, and there's no one else to help me. I'm surrounded by many violent foes. Mighty forces of evil are swirling around me who want to break me to bits and destroy me. Curses pour from their mouths. They're like ravenous roaring lions tearing their prey. Now I'm completely exhausted. I'm spent. Every joint on my body has been pulled apart. My courage has vanished and my inward parts have melted away. I'm so thirsty and parched to dry as a bone. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And now you've left me in the dust for dead. They have pierced my hands and my feet. Like a pack of wild dogs, they tear at me, swirling around me with their hatred. They gather around me like lions to pin my hands and feet. I hope with me just reading all that, that you kind of know that's the story where Jesus is walking up. I want is it? What's the path? <laughs> I can't think of it. I need help. You don't talk about the path. <laughs> okay, so that just went from a very solemn place to, we'll edit that out, right, babe? Right? Okay. Um, <laughs> so with that, just thinking about how Jesus, at this point, you'd be thinking about how he's been whipped. He's been persecuted claimed to do things that he never did but he doesn't speak a word against it so he carries this cross and then he carries it up to mount golgotha i believe okay um and so this is where we're going with they've broken him apart they his mouth he's parched you know they're gloating over him they're throwing in the next verse um where it says they toss dice um they divide my clothes among themselves gambling for my garments in verse 18 19 lord my god please don't stay far away for you are my only might and strength won't you come quickly to rescue to my rescue Give me back my life. Save me from this violent death. 
Save my precious one and only from power of these demons. Save me from all the power of the enemy, from his roaring lion raging against me, and the power of his dark horde. Which we know Jesus prayed that in the um, Garden of Gethsemane. Something very similar. I will praise your name before all my brothers. As, the, as my people gather, I will praise you in their midst. Lovers of Yahweh, praise him. Let all the true seed of Jacob glorify him with your praises. Stand in all of him, all you princely people, and the offspring of Israel. Now the seed of Jacob, if I remember correctly, um, is more so just talking about all the people that are coming from this instance. For he has not despised my cries of deep despair. He's my first responder to my suffering. And he didn't look the other way when I was in pain. He was there all the time, listening to the song of the afflicted. You're the reason for my praise. It comes from you and goes to you. I will keep my promise to praise you before all who fear you among the congregation of your people. I will invite the poor and broken, and they will come and eat until satisfied. Bring Yahweh praise, and you will find him. Your hearts will overflow with life forever. From the four corners of the earth, the peoples of the world will remember and return to the Lord. Every nation will come and worship him. For the Lord is king of all, who takes charge of all the nations. There they are. They're worshiping. The wealthy of this world will, will feast and fellowship with him right alongside the humble of heart, bowing down to the dust, forsaking their own souls. They will all come and worship this worthy king. His spiritual seed, again, is talking about those that are birthed from the cross, shall serve him. Future generations will hear of us about the wonders of the sovereign Lord. His generation yet to be born will glorify him, and they will declare, it is finished. So with this psalm, I think we could take every piece that I've talked about today and break it into that. We know the race. We know that there are going to be times where there's obstacles. But when we go back and we look and we see what his word says, if this can be what describes what Jesus goes through and we already know that he trusted in God, then we can come back to this as well and say, I will trust in you despite the obstacles. And then Galatians with the fruit, we get to be that generation that is yet born of him to glorify. My favorite part, and I'm going to repeat it, is just because I loved it so much when I read it, was verses 24 and 25. I know it's a very long psalm. I do apologize. But in 24 was the, For he has not despised my cries of deep despair. He's my first responder to my sufferings, and he didn't look the other way when I was in pain. He was there all the time, listening to the song of the afflicted. You're the reason for my praise. It comes from you and goes to you. I will keep my promise to praise you before all who fear you, among the congregation and your people. So God, we just thank you for this word. We thank you for your promises that are true we thank you for reminding us that we are all in a race and there's so many different races that are going on right now. But no matter what happens in the race, God, that you are our prize, you are our victor, victor's crown that we're looking for. So I just pray that we just trust in your word, look to your word, find hope and strength and peace in your word. And we also use your word to bring about change. God, I pray that you are glorified. I pray that this blesses somebody and that hope is just planted, like a seed that is being planted. Hope and love and peace. Um, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And in the Messiah's love, I say God bless and have a great day. I hope 
that the word that Pastor Rachel preached to you today has ministered to your hearts, to your minds, to your spirits, and has prepared you for the week that's ahead in, in, a, in a mindset and in a place of God's favor, God's trust. Now, if you're watching this today and you're saying, Pastor Cass, I, I want to know this Jesus that you're talking about. I want to know this, this God that, that, that you're preaching about, that you all are singing about. I, I want to get to know him. All you got to do, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you're, if you're watching, and I don't care if it's two days from now, 10 years from now, if you're watching, let's go ahead and let's pray. If, and you want God in your heart, let's go ahead and pray a quick prayer. So I want you to just repeat after me, dear Jesus. I confess that I am a sinner. I have made mistakes. I have fallen away. But I believe that you are the Son of God, born of a virgin, lived on the earth, died for my salvation, but rose again for my eternity. Teach me how to be like you. Teach me how to love like you. Te teach me how to, how to do, do the things that you do and how to live the best life that I can for your glory and for your honor. Take me as I am. Do the changing work in my heart. I am yours. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer from your heart and, and you, you made that commitment that you were going to follow God, guess what? You are saved. Now, if you're looking for a church home, I know a place. It's called True Vision Christian Community. And we have opened up our membership to anybody in the world. So all you have to do, if you're like, I want to be a member, you're in a whole different state or a whole different country, please go to our website, truevisionlegister.org, click our e-hub and then register, and we'll be able to reach out to you and, and, minister, and, and meet your ministry needs. If you're in Lancaster, we would love to see you at, at, at our service right here where I'm standing, the Lancaster Bandstand, next Sunday at noon. And because of the time moves, we'll be moving all of our summer encounters, both in person and online, to noon until November. So we would love to see you. Um, if you if you could, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube. So you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at True Vision Lancaster, on Twitter at TBCC Lancaster. And when you go on YouTube, just search our name. We'll pop right up. Go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe to to YouTube for us so that way we can let help this word and get this word out to as many people as possible. So thank you so much for joining us today and as I always say go in peace knowing that you're loved.